A normally taboo subject is being brought to light through a special first-of-its-kind event here on the Tech Campus. Coming up, MCTV's Patricia Perry has a look at Tech's first March 4th for Mental Health Rally. Construction is not an uncommon sight here at Texas Tech, but there are a couple of projects that will have la long-lasting effects on the university's athletic department. We have the latest news on both of those projects next. And the Texas Tech Lady Raider basketball team finished out Big 12 regular season play with a huge night on the road. Find out what additions the team made to the record books in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Elizabeth Martinez. And I'm Bryant Torres. Mental health is a taboo subject that is rarely discussed among friends, family, or even faculty and staff and students here at Texas Tech. That's right, Bryant. But one of the group here on campus is trying to make the topic of mental health something that the tech community can talk more about openly. MCTV's Patricia Perry has more. Last Wednesday, the Center for Collegiate Recovery Communities held their first March 4th for Mental Health Rally. Their goal is to increase awareness and bring attention to mental health to help the Texas Tech community. We're talking about mental health. Um, it's, a, it's a sensitive subject that people sometimes have a difficult time talking about. But what we're learning is the more we can talk about it, the more we're able to connect um, people with the help they need. At the rally, the center had speakers talk about what mental health is and why people struggling need to get help. The Center for Collegiate Recoveries has had many people from across the state of Texas come out to their first annual March 4th for Mental Health Rally. They believe mental health is very important and if you need help, you should seek help. I'm with NAMI Texas. Uh, it's the Texas affiliate of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, we do education, support, and advocacy around mental health. And we're here in Lubbock because we are interested in bolstering the availability of programming for individuals with mental health conditions and their family members. NAMI Texas is a statewide organization that wants to help people that are dealing with mental health. Haunch says there is a lack of programs like this and wants to continue helping out people. Both NAMI and the Center for Collegiate Recovery have had many success stories in their programs. We have graduated students in all different types of degrees, the degree of their choice. So we've, we've seen miracles happen with our students here. The Center for Collegiate Recoveries hopes to continue the March 4th for Mental Health Rally annually. They have multiple other events and sessions that students can attend if they are struggling with alcohol, drug, or eating disorders. For MCTV, I'm Patricia Perry. Last week, Texas Tech had the chance to go online and make their voice heard in this year's Student Government Association Senator elections. And on Friday, the winners of each of those races was announced to the Texas Tech community at 6 p.m. at the sub. More than 70 students from each of the university's 10 colleges, the law school, and the graduate school were elected into office. Here in the College of Media and Communications, Emma Dalgan, Faith Douglas, Mabry Payne, and Emily Tyson were chosen as senators during last week's vote. The vote for each of the senator positions took place online last Wednesday and Thursday. Students across the campus had the ability to log in and make their choices for the senator from a pool of candidates. But unlike previous years, there is still another round of SGA elections that will take place next month. Last Tuesday, SGA leadership announced that voting for the ex executive candidates had been delayed to Tuesday, April 7th. Executive candidate positions include student body president, internal vice president, external VP, and graduate VP. All four of the races are contested this year, with two candidates up for office for president, internal VP, and external VP. The graduate vice presidential race features three candidates, all hoping to be elected in April. For more information on each of the executive candidates running for office, visit ttuhub.net. Over the weekend, regular season play wrapped up for both the men's and women's basketball teams, and players won't hit the hardwood in the United Supermarkets Arena again until next fall. But later this summer, both teams will have something else to look forward to before next season begins. Construction continues on the Dustin R. Womble Basketball Center, just across the street from the USA. 
The Womble Center will become the new practice and conditioning home for both the men's and women's basketball teams later this year. Construction on the facility started in December, and right now the projected completion date is set for the end of June. When it's finished, the Womble Center will feature two practice courts, locker rooms, coaches' offices, a trainer's area, and two team lounges. As of right now, work is underway and both the interior and exterior of the building and the final phase of construction should begin as the spring semester ends. Along with the Womble, Texas Tech Athletics has just announced another new project that would change the face of Jones AT&T Stadium. Last Thursday, the university officially released the plans for the Ed Whitaker Center for Athletic Administration. The facility will be located on the second and third floors of the <coughs> East Stadium building. The Whitaker Center will feature office space for Tech Athletics staffs who are currently located in the South End Zone building. Construction in the East Stadium building will begin next month, with completion expected early next year. Yesterday, the South Plains saw some much more needed rain as a slow-moving storm system brought in over half an inch of moisture to the Lubbock area. That's true, Brian. But by this morning, the clouds had moved out and sunshine took its place, making for a nice morning to walk to class. So how long will the sun stick around this week? MCTV's Madison Hardin joins us in studio with the latest look at the forecast. Madison? Thanks, guys. Well, over the weekend, we did finally see a little bit of spring weather, and that is spring in West Texas in its most truest form. Spring in West Texas means three things typically. Abundant sunshine, like you can see behind me, a little bit of rain, and of course, lots of wind. And we saw all three of them this weekend. But all that rain has moved out of the area for now, and we should be seeing sunny skies for the rest of the week. For today, with all that sunshine, the high climbed up to 75 degrees, mostly sunny and warm, with a north-by-northwesterly wind coming at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For tonight, it is going to cool off a little bit because we still have some moisture in the air. Mostly clear and cool with a southerly wind coming at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now looking at the South Plains as a whole, we can see another thing that is pretty typical of spring weather here on the South Plains, and that is a little bit of fog. We aren't going to be seeing much of it in Lubbock, but especially a little bit east of us at, off of the Caprog is where we're going to be seeing that foggy weather. Around Spur and Guthrie, they're going to be experiencing a lot of it there, which is going to de decrease visibility if you're going to be driving in those areas tomorrow. But for tomorrow, the warm weather is going to roll back into town, and we are going to be seeing highs jump up to 77 degrees for Lubbock. And most, for the most part, it's going to be fairly warm here on the South Plains. We haven't quite broken 80 for tomorrow, but that should be coming in for later in the week. Bringing it back into Lubbock metropolitan area locally, we can see that for Tuesday, like I said, high of 77 tomorrow, low of 51 and a south by southwesterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now for Wednesday, the moment you've all been waiting for, drum roll please, we're finally breaking 80 degrees. Low 55 for that day, westerly wind coming up 10 to 20 miles per hour. A little bit more cloudy that day, but obviously the sunshine is still going to be around, so it's going to be very nice for Wednesday. That's a good day to get outside. And then for Thursday, we're going to be having a high of 78 degrees, a low of 49, and a west by northwesterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Be sure to tune in on Thursday, especially for a look at the weather for Friday and the weekend, as I know a lot of you will be traveling, and a lot of you should know the weather before getting on the roads. I'm always a stickler for weather and road safety, so make sure to check us out on Thursday to see what you have in store for you for your commute. I'm Madison Art for MCTV. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Madison. As we mentioned earlier, the regular season is officially over for the men's and women's basketball teams. And for one of those teams, the last game of conference play also ended up being one for the record books. On Saturday, the Lady Raiders took on the Oklahoma Sooners in Norton. Tech went into the contest after a heartbreaking loss to West Virginia on senior night last Wednesday. But the women were able to use the game as motivation as they went on to defeat Oklahoma 106-94. The victory not only gave Tech one more mark in the win column, but it also gave the team their first win in Norton in 15 years. Saturday's game was also the second time this season the Lady Raiders have scored 100 plus points in a Big 12 game. And that was the first time for the women to rack up more than one game over 100 points in 26 years. The victory also get, gives Tech an 18 and 11 record, which gives the Lady Raiders their first winning season since 2013. With the regular season complete, the women head to the Big 12 championships in Kansas City their first game is scheduled for this Thursday at 8.30 against Kansas, and you can watch it on Fox College Sports. The Red Raider basketball team also finished out their season this weekend, but the result was a bit different than the women. Tech met up with some number one ranked Kansas Jayhawks at the USA on Saturday. The Red Raiders walked into a fired up arena and used that energy to keep things close through most of the game. Tech even tied things up at the two minute mark of the second half, 
but after that, Kansas took advantage of a turnover and some late fouls, and Tech lost 62-66. to Junior Davide Moretti put on a big performance, scoring 18 points with 5 rebounds and 2 assists. Senior TJ Hollyfield put up 11 points on the night, but freshman Je Jemias Ramsey had a relatively quiet evening with only 6 points, 1 rebound, and 2 assists. The Red Raiders now head to Kansas City to start their run in men's side of the Big 12 Championships. Tech will take on the Texas Longhorns at 11.30 a.m. on Thursday in the Spring Center. The Red Raiders are currently on a four-game losing streak, and a good performance in Kansas City could make all the difference in their chances of appearance in the NCAA Tournament. Tip-off for Thursday's game is set for 11.30 a.m., and you can watch it on ESPN, too. Speaking of streaks, the Texas Tech baseball team continues to sail through preseason competition after facing the Rice Owls at Dan Law Field over the weekend. The Red Raiders met up with the Owls on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and the team pulled out wins in all three games. After a relatively easy 7-1 victory on Friday night, Tech came back from an 8-1 deficit on Saturday to beat the Owls 19-16. On Sunday, it looked like Rice might finally bring an end to Tech's winning streak as the Owls outscored the Red Raiders 6-2 into the bottom of the eighth inning. But after that, the Red, Ra the Red Raider bats lit up and Tech scored five unanswered runs to take home the win, 7-6. With Sunday's victory, Tech's winning streak is up to 12 games after their only loss to the season to Tennessee last month. After a two-week homestand, the Red Raiders now pack their bags and head to Biloxi, Mississippi for a showdown with the 10th-ranked Bulldogs. The two-game series kick off tomorrow at 6 p.m., followed by a 5 p.m. start on Wednesday. Both games will be available on SEC Networks+. Plus. So, Brian, did you have a chance to catch any of this weekend's games? I didn't, unfortunately, but I hope to catch uh, more games in the near future, though. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.